You'd pay 150 bucks because it's so ch- because you cannot find it anywhere else. Yeah, you cannot obtain one anymore. So I would, I'd pay a little over. Hello and welcome back to another exciting podcast episode of American Pylon. Your host here, Will Mehal, joined by my counterparts, James Thomas Fanning the Fourth, Tyler Combs, and producer Dave behind the tech making all of this possible. Uh, we've got a lot of little different stuff to talk <laughs> about. Um, and we're not going to focus really on Georgia football today, but uh, we're going to take a look at NBA and NFL and talk about uh, some of the things that happened this past weekend uh, with the NFL semifinals and um, a little bit of the GOAT discussion, which will be exciting. But before we get on to that, I want to give a shout out to our partners at In We Go. Uh, for just 30 bucks a month, you can get unlimited access to events in and around your city. Uh, it's now live in Phoenix, Denver, Washington, D.C., uh, here in Atlanta, and also in the Tampa area. So uh, if you enjoy going to uh, ball games, concerts, brewery tours, festivals, anything like that, be sure to check them out at In We Go. And now if you plug in the promo code PYLON into the promo code box, you'll get $10 off your first month. So be sure to check them out at In We Go. We, uh, Will and I hit up the uh, Georgia Tech Notre Dame game on Tuesday. That's why we're recording later in the week this week. Yeah, it was it was fun. I hadn't been to whatever, what is it, McCamish or McCamish, McCamish Pavilion? I've never been to a sporting event on Tech's campus before. Really? Tech is as advertised. It was a lot of dudes. <laughs> McCamish is still pretty game. new. Though. Yeah, they just the recently really itself, isn't it? redid that. And it was yeah, it was small, but it was pretty nice. It yeah. was like 8,400. Yeah. No, so. it, it was a fun event, and uh, we saw our friend Michael Perry there, who was manning Got the some heavily Chick-fil-A. heavily discounted Chick-fil-A. That was nice. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't really stay through the whole game. I had to, to run and get some more like work done, but... Um, they kept the game pretty close. I think Notre Dame only lost, lost by a couple. Yeah, Notre Dame lost by two because he got into Tech scored to go up by four, and there was seven seconds left. <clears throat> and Notre Dame spent the entire seven seconds setting up a two-point play. And then they made it as time expired to lose by two. It was, pretty, yeah. it was pretty goofy clock management. It was kind of funny to watch that. Because it was all... like if it had been a two-point game, it would have been a very clutch buzzer beater type shot to tie the game. Yeah. And it, it just the game was over. Yeah, Notre Dame – um, usually isn't this bad at basketball. So, I mean, they're not having a good season. Um, but, no, it was still fun fun to go. And there's a lot of other really cool events. The Winter Brewery Festival, I think, will be mm-hmm. really cool. Where yeah, is yeah. that at? It's at Atlantic Station. That's right. That's right. So that'll For be fun. any of our Atlanta listeners. Yep. That'll definitely be fun to check out. And there's a bunch of other stuff, which is exciting. Um, but Tyler, Tyler brought up a good point of discussion, a good topic here. I brought it up. Um, that I think was... Who was? Did Brent bring it up? Should Brent we give Dr. Up. Brent Johnson one of our for bringing it up? One of our loyal viewers <clears throat> brought it up for discussion, and I think it's an interesting one. It's probably been kicked around a bunch, and I just haven't given it much thought. But now that you've brought it up, I do want to talk about it. So, Tyler, why don't yeah. you introduce the topic of discussion that we're going to kick things off with First here. time ever. What's up? All right. See how I do. Host Tyler. Here yeah, we go. so uh, I think Brent gets a lot of his... Uh, his, his uh, Material, I guess, from larger sports radio like ESPN. I know he's a big Mike and Mike guy. Are they, they were larger? Still together. I mean, debatable, but you know, <clears throat> other they other they dabble. Talk. Yeah, um, so I'm sure it's that's where he got it from. But anyway, so <laughs> the con- Tyler <laughs> but, <some> shade. but <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think not it, an original thought. In that it's because day. I don't typically listen to like Mike and Mike or the uh, the herd or anything to that effect. But I think it's a good discussion as far as a national look and across different um, across different sports is. Uh, why is it that Tom Brady is considered um, or, or, or is praised more for making his sports championship game more frequently than LeBron? For instance, why, uh, why is it that people consider Brady to be the GOAT? Um, they don't really bash necessarily him getting there, uh, but yet LeBron, people are always thinking or hacking at how he got there. And uh, not really giving him enough credit is the argument, I guess, is that Brady gets more credit for making his sports championship than LeBron does for doing it as frequently as he does it. And they are both obviously yeah. very talented athletes, very good at their own sport, uh, probably the top performers in their own sport. Um, obviously with football, the quarterback versus whatever athlete on the field is another debate. But as far as <clears throat> faces of their uh, prospective leagues, those are the two 
best of our life in 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 our lifetime and maybe ever. Um, so why is it that Brady gets a pass? Would you say at least in regards to saying you know he made it, he earned it, he deserved it, whereas LeBron gets kind of a gets kind of trashed for it. I mean, I think that they both deserve it. I mean, it, they both. But I, I, mean, I think what it is is there's a, there's the narrative even this week that it's like well Tom Brady this is his ninth Super Bowl nobody's ever done that he's undisputed uh, goat greatest of all time for our listeners that that don't know what that means um, <laughs> there's probably a few out there but uh, and then LeBron he's been to eight finals in a row but nobody really talks about that the narrative yeah. is that he's what three and five three and well, five I, yeah. in those finals I think part of it stems from how LeBron got there. Right. So, I mean, he left Cleveland in a very controversial way. He was mm-hmm. a really easy person to hate and dislike. Um, and he went to Miami to create probably one of the first, like, artificially manufactured super teams yeah. that we mm-hmm. now see in the common NBA era, right? Like, that's, that's something we have all the time, right? We have it now in the Warriors, you know, and mm-hmm. it's just kind of commonplace. But when it happened... I think that it was something that a lot of people took as like a, well, you can't cut it here, right? You couldn't, you couldn't do it here. So now you got to go someplace else to try and grab up all of these rings. And I understand why you do it. And, you know, he wasn't necessarily chasing a paycheck. He was chasing rings. So I have a little bit more, I guess, respect for that. But at the same time, Brady has been a lifer on the Patriots since he took over for Bledsoe. And then the franchise never looked back. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I think that's one thing that plays into it from, from my perspective. And I think the other thing, and Tyler, you might have alluded to it a little bit, but I think it's much harder to go and play consistently well and have to rely on so many moving pieces in an organization like a football team versus the impact that one player can make and play the vast majority of minutes in a game and sit when it doesn't really matter. Yeah, that's that's my take. But with that, with that, I mean, just play devil's advocate. You could argue that it's more impressive what LeBron has done because he's been more responsible for. Because Brady has arguably also played for the greatest coach of all time throughout all that. Yeah, I mean, so I, I think, think where you're saying, like, I almost think it, it's you're arguing. You could argue the opposite, where you're saying LeBron is responsible for so much more. So shouldn't he? Doesn't he deserve more credit? Yeah, I mean, I think he definitely does. I mean, there's no doubt that LeBron in his last season with the Cavs dragged that team. Into yeah, the play, they're, they're the worst yeah. team in the league now. Yeah, I mean they went so, from, and they really haven't had any kind of a, a big change on their roster other than that. So right. like, well, Kyrie I'm not, Irving is a he was gone before. He was gone, he was gone, gone before that. Yeah. So I mean, I don't think that I'm not taking saying it to take anything away from LeBron, but what I'm saying is that it's an easy narrative to look at that and say that you know when you've got five players on the court and the best person in the world that you can pass the ball off to, and not to mention that he's just an athletic freak, mm-hmm. like and. There's a lot of other things to go with, and you know when he drives the paint, like chances are he's going to go to the line, right? So like, there's a lot of things that I think that play into that, and getting him the points and the minutes that he deserves. Plus, I think in the NBA, like you can just sit people to rest in games that don't mean anything yeah. in regular season. Like yeah. if you're going to the playoffs point, and you have yeah. like a halfway decent seed, once you've secured that, you could sit these guys and have them play minimal minutes and rest up for a whole season. You can't really do that in the NFL with a quarterback position. Yeah, you can if you get to a certain point later in the season. But yeah, I think usually one game. There's a, there's a lot to unpack there, right? I mean, <clears throat> obviously the sports are very different from the guy, number of games you play in the season to the number of guys playing on the field or the court. Um, and then I think a lot of it, and we were debated, we debated, we debated this amongst a lot of our friends uh, when Brent brought it up, which we thought would be good to have this forum to do it on. Maybe people will comment and kind of let us know what they think because it, it is fun to discuss because it's outside of just UGA football. But um, I, I think what, what it came down to from what I perceived and what I think and my initial thoughts were it's just simply how Brady is perceived versus how LeBron is perceived. We're not saying the argument is that one is it more deserving than the other. Obviously, LeBron is one of the greatest of all time, if not the whatever, wherever you stand on that subject. It's just that Brady seems, like Will said, to be a lifer. He has deferred money. He's a 44th highest paid player in the league. Granted, now it's a little different because in the NFL, the quarterback is at a premium, so they're always going to be the highest paid player on the team. Uh, but as far as what he's going after and the highest paid quarterbacks, he's not even close for his overall um, 
contract. So I just think that makes not we're not saying Brady's that likable. It's just relative to LeBron. We can hate Brady. You know, obviously, he's kind of been plagued along with Belichick with kind of a tarnished reputation with a Deflate Gate, Spy Gate. Um, I mean, he kissed his he, son. On the he lips. kissed his son on the lips. That was, that was awkward. He had that <laughs> weird dancing video. He married Giselle. The guy just can't seem to really lose. So he's a, he's a, another easy guy to kind of hate and pick on. But just compared to LeBron, LeBron has kind of hopped around the league. Like Will said, alluded to, he kind of built a super team. Went from there, went back to Cleveland, earned it, which was fun to watch him win it in Cleveland. Um, and then, you know, now to L.A., a big market. I mean, it'll be a, very impressive to see him if he can take that team there as well. I guess think back to what Will said. It is, in my opinion, it's the individual versus team argument, whereas in foot, in basketball, I think the individual is can influence a team in a season much easier. With the five guys, I think, like Jimmy said as well, that puts a lot more on his shoulders. But I think if you look across the NBA, look at Michael Jordan, look at – uh, Kevin Durant, look at even James Harden, look at Russell Westbrook. You put certain guys on certain teams, they already influence that team so much. And so it just goes to show you how little it takes to really change your team. The Hawks is, a, is, a, is, a, is being in the Hawks' backyard. We always joke. We're just a LeBron away. Or at least one yeah. slightly game-changing player away from just being a decent franchise. I'm not, now, that's not saying you're going to make it to the NBA Finals eight years in a row. But it's just I think it is much more – impressive for me for Brady to be as good as he is to be just a one cog in the wheel of an entire football team to be the greatest of all time possibly in Brady and to still have to rely on your defense he can't go out there and play defense like LeBron came he can't control the whole 60 minutes of the game he can do his best he can do his damnest but then look at guys like Dan Marino very good one of the greats of all time never won one because there was just so much more stacked against a good quarterback. You can be the best quarterback, but be on a really crappy team. I think a lot of guys, uh, Archie Manning, they said he was yeah, very good. That's the first guy Never got there. Yeah, so you just hear about it all the time that they were so good in their sport, but they can't overcome 23 other – or 21 other guys in the field. Mm -hmm. So do you think it's fair to say that definitively, no questions asked, it's way easier to build a championship basketball team than it is to build an NFL? I mean, I think I we've think seen that, I think right? it's way easier to build a team that will go to the finals in the East. Yeah. In the NBA, because that's the other thing. Well, West too, and Golden. Well, I won't say it's easy. Well, right Golden now, State I'm saying, did, like LeBron yeah. is realistically not going to make the finals this year. Because sure. that's the thing to me that gives Brady the title is that there's so much more parity in the NFL. Like you mm -hmm. look at the conference championships from this past weekend, which we'll touch on. Both awesome games. Both went to overtime. Yep. It's. It sounds like an oxymoron to say it's harder to make a Super Bowl than an NBA Finals because there's two teams in both. But it. it sh I don't know. It just seems to me like the. As you get into the playoffs, the teams are much closer in skill level to yeah. each other. Whereas in the NBA, yes. it was like yes. mm -hmm. last year, all we heard about the whole season, I believe it was the Raptors. Like, oh, the Raptors could really give Cleveland a run for their money going into the— They get the, swept. They get swept, yeah. <laughs> and it's like, well, uh, you know, Boston. Boston's going to be the team that's really going to push LeBron 4-1. But I feel like, like basketball is really the only sport that that's like a consistent bet. I, I mean, if you look at baseball, I feel like there's so many— and David, you know, I'd love for you to chime in. And hear your thoughts. I feel like baseball is, is the same way as, as football or, you know, hockey, if you follow it, that, like, there's so many factors with a team that, you know, you can have a guy who's, you know, hot at the plate, mm -hmm. um, but there are so many other people that you have to rely on. you got to have a deep bullpen. You yeah. know, you got there's just so much that goes into it. David, what are your thoughts on this, um, you know, weighing in on the baseball side and how you compare all of these other sports to the NBA, building a team and – having a, a player as great as LeBron basically just being a game changer? Um, I think we've talked about it before a little bit, but going off of what you just said, is, is you've got different pitchers every night. It's not the same five guys on the court. You know, you've, you've got a whole slew of people on the, on, the, on the field, and you've got a hit, you've got a field separately. It's, it's just there's no telling what's going to happen by the end of the game. And – with how long baseball season is, your stars can get injured. I mean, that's the same with any sport. But, like, um, I don't know. I think there just are a lot of points that you can't always control as much as you could with a sport with five people. Yeah, because, yeah. I mean, in baseball, you any given player is only involved in a very small percentage of the plays, unless it's the pitcher, but then they can only play every five nights. So Yeah, but then it was funny you brought up, like, Brady's had – a great run with Belichick and, you know, being one of the best coaches of all time. But it's like, 
on the flip side, do you even really need that in the NBA? I mean, what was Eric Spolster going to sit down and tell think, Dwayne yeah, Wade yeah, that's another and LeBron aspect. James and Chris Bosh? Like hey, guys. Yes, man. Yeah, like what is he going to tell or them? Ty- Tyron would, Lou. Yeah, like or, what is yeah. he going to tell the greatest player of all time that he doesn't already know and like set up these pl- – I mean, you're looking at just like raw athletic talent that has been honed over the years to work in a system with two of the other best players in the league. Like mm-hmm. I don't know the coaching – and again – you're talking about Miami at this point? Yeah. Okay. But but even like if you were to look at um Steve Kerr, like with the Warriors. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like what is Steve Kerr out there doing? You know, and he had these issues with his back and it was like terrible, but it's not like that franchise is gonna fall apart. Well sure. didn't because Luke, Steve... didn't Luke Walton step in at like thirty one years old a couple of years ago and they won a championship with him? Is that right? I don't know. I'm, that's where I'm ignorant. Yeah, because somebody, went to somebody can Lakers. fact check us on that. Please. But it's yeah. like there's not there's not this like massive swing that's going to happen in fortunes of a team that has, uh, you know, basically six Olympians yeah. on it, on yeah. the Warriors. Like, oh, totally so agree. I don't think that's even a fair comparison when you're talking about coaching. Yeah. If, if it's even relevant in the NBA. And I guess I see, I think, to play devil's advocate, because I'm sure when Brent listens to this, and other people maybe also, it's not just, it's not just directed towards Brent, but uh, I guess now we've had this discussion already. I can see, or to play devil's advocate, in LeBron's defense as well, it's because he is that good that those things, we, we, we dismiss those. We dismiss those coaches. We dismiss, we dismiss the rest of the teams because we say, you know, he's talented enough. Maybe he should do it. So, therefore, he does. And then when he gets there, we're like, mm, not impressed. But then we say, well, it's basketball. It's easier to do it if you have that. But then, again, he's a generational talent. James Harden, who is a maybe another generational talent, is not carrying the Rockets to the finals eight yeah. years in a row. You know, he is, you know, it's, I mean, someone has to, I mean, I don't say someone has to do it. But if LeBron James is going to be there, then, you know, why not him? So, I get that. I get that he's talented enough, and he is the one actually doing it, and no one else is. That's relative to the NBA. I guess think when you look at Brady and back to and back to LeBron, I guess think <clears throat> I think it really does fall on all of the different moving pieces, like we said, to that. I mean, maybe it is Belichick, maybe it's Brady. We'll never know that. You know, but Phil Jackson, was it Phil Jackson? Was it Kobe? Was it Phil Jackson? Was it Michael, you know, we don't, we don't know. I mean, it, it kind of looks like Phil Jackson. That's a common denominator there, you know, but yeah. both of those guys were also generational talents. And I mean, the Bulls were stacked. Now, looking back, they look stacked. But I, it's the Lakers, same thing. So you can see where a talent almost, if a coach strikes while the iron's hot in basketball, you can ride that and be a dominant, you know, in, I guess, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a, well, it's a guess, fun argument. Yeah, because you could argue. So basically, what it comes down to is between the Patriots going to all these Super Bowls and then LeBron going to all these finals, there's, Tom Brady is this is the constant for the Patriots. Hey, kicks. <laughs> Our kicks, dogs kicks just came down. Um, so Tom Brady is the constant for the Patriots, and then LeBron is the constant for the basketball teams, right? So they're the ones that are essentially yeah. getting their teams there. Yes. So is it more impressive that LeBron is twenty percent of his team on the floor and you know doing that much with the different teams? Yeah, or, or, you know, dragging everyone there being the heart and soul of the team, or is mm-hmm. it more impressive that Brady is essentially 5% of the team and also getting his team there? So is, well, is Brady doing more with less it. responsibility? So he needs to do more with his 5% of the game to get the team there than LeBron needs to do with his 20% of the game to get the team there. That's a, Or is it more impressive that LeBron is doing 20% while Brady's doing 5%? That's a, like, that's a good point. There's two things that I want to address <clears> in the last portion that I'll touch on about the coaches. Tyler, you, you brought up a good point. And I'm point. leaving Belichick out of that argument. I'm just looking at football versus basketball, basically. Yeah. So. Uh, but you brought up a good point about Phil Jackson, and you said, like, was it Phil, was it Kobe, was it Phil, was it Michael? I think that was at a point in time in the league where coaching made a bigger difference because they were working inside a system. You always hear about the triangle system that Phil That's Jackson fair. used. That's fair. Yeah. Those, those members of that team were – were designed and brought on to work within a system. Now you've got ISO basketball where people are just spreading out the floor and opening lanes. And then as soon as some guy drives and you have a player get sucked down to help him, they kick it out and they shoot a three. It's, I mean, and we'll talk about this a little bit. I think that's why the NBA, um, you know, it, we'll get to it in a minute, but yeah. I, I think that's why it's becoming less and less watchable. As far as Jimmy's point, is it more impressive that Tom Brady is less of the equation um, but still a part of a winning franchise and consistent performance? Or is it more impressive that LeBron is a massive portion of their success um, but really has it all in his hands all the time? I think that's a good question, but I think that 
you have to have a more consistent performance in Brady's line of work because, yeah, I mean, the defense can go out and play, but, you know, every throw, every snap, all of that stuff come, comes down and starts with you. I mean, you're the first person on offense, you know, unless you're looking at a random play with like a direct snap yeah. that's going to yeah. have the ball. It's true. So that all that, of that yeah. starts with you. Now you have to rely on a ton of other people for route running mm-hmm. in your line to block mm-hmm. and everybody doing their job, but getting the ball out on time and getting it in the right place all starts with Tom Brady. I think it's more impressive what he has done than what LeBron has done in his tenure. Yeah. I think that's a huge point too. I mean, obviously we can pick apart all the minutia of both sports, but I think to that point, if Brady's left guard, left tackle goes down, I mean, my God, I mean, that, that is going to play onto his performance that entire year, you know, that, that, that's huge. If your number one receiver goes down, if you have a whole plethora of injuries, which same thing we said about basketball, but still, no matter we're seeing, no matter where LeBron goes, replace that with just injuries. Say people start falling left and right, but he's still doing it wherever he goes. Yes, he's good enough to make it happen. But to me, it's just like, well, it doesn't matter who your surrounding cast is. It's just, it's that, it's, if no one yeah, else can match up, it's that I, easy. But that argument to me is like saying that. I'm trying to be because then everybody has to be so like multifaceted in basketball. Like Brady's job is not to be the left tackle. No, but like so if, know, if like Melo saying, is is a pitcher not as good because his center fielder got hurt. If yeah. Melo Ball went down, is it Melo? Is he the one that's in Lon- Lonzo. Lonzo. Lonzo Ball? If he goes down, yeah, doesn't matter. Contrib- starting five contributor. It'll hurt. They'll definitely be lacking in in ways, but. That's, right. That doesn't affect LeBron's game all that much. It may affect his options outside of that. LeBron's still going to perform how he's going to perform. They still have to double-team him. They right. still have to draw attention to him. I get yeah. that. Now Brady loses a center, loses a left tackle. Someone's going to you know, guard his blind side, and it's just a you know, drop-off in talent like mm-hmm. there would be in basketball. I think that is a bigger detriment to his performance over the course of a year than it would be for yeah. LeBron's point guard or LeBron's I mean, I, I agree with that. I just don't know. If- to me, if that holds any weight in saying one is better than the other, I think no, that would be a better argument to say, like, if Tom Brady's middle linebacker got hurt, you know, it's going to affect the team negatively, but yeah, I guess really I say his ability that to do his, his job. Well, I'd say it. I mean, I think if that, if anyone on his line goes down, it's going to affect how qu- it's going to affect this entire game get the ball plan. Out quicker. Or I mean, or and it starts with him. For that. I mean, he has to account for that every single snap. LeBron is not to account for what's his name again. Lonzo. Lonzo Ball <laughs> being out every single dribble on the court. He just doesn't. It'll change, but, you, I mean. Yeah. And, and there's there's one other thing that I want to bring up, and I think it is um, the impact of performance per game and what it means for the outcome of a season, right? So LeBron can go out there um, almost at any point in time and have a terrible showing, and people will write it off as an off day, and it's like whatever. But in the NFL, if – Tom Brady goes out there and has a quote unquote off day. Like there are serious questions in my mind that are then being asked, you know, about the games to come, particularly at crucial points in the season. Well, I think that's an age thing. I mean, no, I'm saying that about have what happened five years ago. No, I'm yeah. saying like per, like what the performance of a Tom Brady or any quarterback versus the, the star of a basketball game, just the way that the seasons are put together that the impact performance of a quarterback consistently throughout the season is much more critical to the success of a team than the impact of a basketball player in the same clump of games. Does that make sense to, to you guys what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm tracking. Because each game is much more important. So Tom Brady has to go out there and perform yeah. basically perfectly every single time because if yeah. his defense has a, a bad game, it's like, well, now you're – Completely counting on Tom yeah. to outscore yeah. or any quarterback. Whereas LeBron, he's got five other people or four other people that can score, right? He's going to draw a double team every time he goes to the paint anyways. So there's four other people that he can pass it to that are professional basketball players that can score at the exact same time. Does that make sense what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, I guess so. So that's where I'm coming. <clears throat> well, that's just what I'm, that's where I'm coming. Well, in that's, I mean, that I, I Tom feel Brady like it's means apples and oranges. I feel like Tom, LeBron James having a bad game would be equivalent to Tom Brady having like a bad series or a bad quarter. When you're looking at the you know the percentage of the season mm-hmm. that it's happening across. I mean, Tom you mean Brady, Le- just, LeBron having a bad series. Game. No, I'm saying Le- LeBron having a bad game is one eighty tooth of the season, whereas Tom Brady having a bad game is one sixteenth of the season. 
Right. So, so like LeBron would have, counts, have a stretch of more games. So that's what right. I'm saying. Okay. I'm yeah, saying so like, like if you say like Brady comes out and just has a stinker like a three interception day that just happens with quarterbacks, that would be more equivalent to LeBron having like five games in a row that he sucks. That's true, but don't you think it's more in, impactful? Which is a lot harder to string along, I would say, right? As a player of that caliber, it'd be harder for both to Brady. I mean, Brady can have an off a game. He can have one bad game and cost him and be done and not make it. Right. He LeBron had a bad game have, against the Titans this year. LeBron, he got benched in the fourth quarter. We LeBron James could afford a five-game skid if he wanted, or sit out if he yeah. pulls something or whatever. You know, I mean, that's the difference of the sports. That is where it. But that's also gets. what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Like, and this is kind of an offense to defense thing, so it's not exactly apples to apples. But as I was saying, you've got four other guys on the court with you that can also put up offensive numbers and play defense. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So, like, if worse comes to worse, LeBron can be a freak of nature athletically and still play solid defense and rely on other role players to put up offense uh, and on offensive numbers, whereas Tom, that's completely out of his hands, right? I mean, he's the the one and the only as far as where these offensive plays are starting from. Sure, yeah. So that's, that is what, that's all I'm saying. checking into plays. There's right. so much more into that. I mean, LeBron does I mean, I know basketball <clears throat> does that too. You know, they read, but you're right. There's a lot of that. Um, I just think, you know, I guess in closing this piece of it, I just think those are all the kind of, the, again, the, 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 the minutiae, the smaller, finer points of both sports, which you can never really argue. You know, it's, it's apples and oranges. They are different sports. I guess think it's how they're perceived um, just as athletes and as people and kind of their journey through each of their leagues. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's just how people say, like, I don't like that he's hopped around. I like that he – I don't necessarily like Brady, but, you know, he's he's done it right. He's consistent. He stayed there. He's deferred yep. money. He's not one of the highest paid. You know, you got to – you know, I yeah. can see why it's the case. I have a question before we close this piece, though. Who would you say then – Athlete wise, is more impressive than Brady as far as their, what they've strung along as S as a pure athlete. Not no. I was well, gonna say LeBron just about James. anybody else other than. Tom <laughs> no, Brady. I'm saying so. Yeah. We're gonna give what sounds like you. Brady the nod over LeBron as far as yep. we think. That's just did it right. I'm doing air quotes. You know, maybe a little more respectable just because of how hard we're saying it is and how much more goes into a football team and how many more variables there are. Who would you say there's an athlete in whatever sport that has achieved that kind of level of success, you know, five whatever titles, five finals, whatever it is in a row and whatever perspective perspective. Lance sport. Armstrong. Lance Armstrong. <laughs> and he yes. did it with one he did it with <laughs> one <laughs> bike. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we always say. Uh, but can, I mean, I can't think of anybody. But is there one uh, dominant? So let, me get, let me get this. Are you saying that is there one dominant player in I would each say of these sports in, in more one, so? One mm-hmm. person that perfected yes. their craft and did their job to a level that Tom Brady did it would be yes. Mariano Rivera, right? Oh, outside of football. And, outside of football. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean Wayne Gretzky. First, I you're gonna go Wayne Gretzky. How, how many did he do like a certain finals in a row? Did he do like eleven? Six. I'd have two. to double. I'd have to double check. I don't know off the top of my head. But I David, mean, do you know? There's probably right. some do, do you, tennis you players out there that have. Roger Federer. Yeah, Federer took the words right out of my mouth. See, I mean, obviously, that's a huge discussion, right? Because I like, mean, Roger tennis, Federer. It's just is, you. Of course, you can't. It's, it's Roger Federer is more dominant in his sport than LeBron James is in his. See, it's just so funny because now the now we're peeling back like LeBron at least has to carry four others. Federer just has to carry himself. You know, it's like, well, he's only responsible for him. He is totally, I mean, it's him versus one other person, but like, I, I, don't, I can't get into all that. But that's I what think, I'm saying. That's why I think it's, well, so I'm not saying that's, it's That's harder. the root of the argument that you can make all day is like, mm-hmm. is it more impressive that, you know, is a, essentially is a tennis player more impressive than a, than a football, football player? player? Because a tennis player is doing it all himself. It's all on him. Whereas yeah. a football player, maybe Brady's defense sucks. Maybe his wide receivers are all a bunch of yeah. you know, slow white guys. Maybe he doesn't have an offensive line. They're and short, still, fast white guys. They, and they're gritty. They're gym rats. <laughs> Cerebral first players. First in, last out kind of guys. Um, yeah. So, I, I, don't, I don't know. Really I guess that, that is the argument, I guess. Tweet yeah. at us. Because there are dominant listeners. tennis players and golfers, which is strictly on them reading whatever it is, the match, the spin of the ball, reading the course, if you're, if you're a golfer. Whereas football... It's the same field, same everything, every game. It is just you and 21 other guys in the field as a quarterback, essentially. And I'll tell you, somebody that used to get other difficult. people's number was Greg Maddox. Yeah, it'll say pitching. His, is, his strikeouts, were you just the frustration on those batters' face, like after that third strike, just I, I loved it, man. 
He was because he only threw like 86, 87 miles an hour. Yeah, see, I like I like baseball is the ultimate one where I thought you can be the best pitcher in the game and it may not matter. It may for not matter dick. one bit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if, it may not matter for squat. Of, yeah, if the rest of your rotation sucks <laughs> yeah. or if that's your team why, can't hit. That's why I'm just saying generically him versus hitters, not scores. Yeah, not yeah. World <laughs> Series. Baseball is one of the hardest, man. Because yeah, I mean, no, I mean, there's been has there ever been a pitcher to do like four World Series in a row? I don't think. I mean, that'd have to be a team It would have to first. be like in the then, 1920s. To yeah. go? Wait, to go or to win for us? Uh, to go. I mean, it's like Brady hasn't won all of his, but LeBron I mean, hasn't won all of his, so that would be unreal. But uh, Mariano Rivera has won five. five. He won five, yeah. So I mean, Was he the one that just got yeah, inducted? Yeah, the first, first, the first, first ever. ever. Yeah. Yogi yeah. Berra won 10 World in a row? Series. Not in a row, but in his career. <laughs> and I, You know what? This is a, a little bit of a side notion, but I hate when people discount um, older baseball, older baseball, or older, you know, whatever, because it's like, you know, they weren't, you know, there wasn't CC Sabathia out there throwing ninety three mile an hour sliders, and it's like, yeah, but nobody was doing that at the time. Like yeah. everybody was playing with the same level of training and equipment that was available at the time. So you were also getting your shin shredded by metal cleats yeah. on double plays, right? Before that's rules fair. existed. That's, fair. I mean, I think rules that's existed. a good point. Will. I mean, you, you, it's like, it's like football. Your schedule is your schedule. So college football gets a bad rap for you. You, just, you play with what you have essentially, which is not a vote for UCF because they suck. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think to your point, yes, I, mean, I agree. Uh, it is, it's fun to leave errors where they are because they play with what they had and they were dominant with what, the hand they were dealt with, which is which is fun to to you know kind of have it reserved and have it be I guess praised or put in the Hall of Fame. I, or what I'm trying to say, Reverend. Yeah. Reverend. <laughs> anyway, uh, reverence. The game obviously wouldn't translate well now, right? A batter now, back in the day, versus pitching now, the, all the different pitches. Well, yeah, Babe, the, Babe I mean, Ruth had like a 46 sports, ounce like. bat. You know. Yeah. It's but like, what I, what oh, I see, wow. what I think is pretty crazy to I'm think about. That's so either a lot or a little. What I th- what I think is pretty I crazy to think it's about is the sport of golf, because like these people were playing on the exact same courses, like at Augusta National, but they yeah. didn't have, you know, all of the new technology, all of the new mm. like the newest drivers, the newest materials that were coming out. I mean, you see drives that are like, you know, over three hundred yards, like mm-hmm. Tiger belting them out there into the middle of the fairway. These guys were playing with like. When they say woods, it was like wood. You know what I mean? And then they were still hitting these scores. Now, sometimes they're not like as crazy as, you know, being under par. But I think that that is almost more impressive, um, you know, because the weight room and training wasn't as uh, much of a focus now, even in the world of golf. And the materials just weren't there. So I think that that is probably one of the most impressive things you could look at the same courses, different time periods, and you still had people who were, had just as impressive streaks yeah, and wins. That's fair. I uh, can't go yeah. to save my life. So, yeah. Have but, any mm. of y'all used actual woods? Uh, once. I broke it. We have some in the basement. <laughs> yeah. we, have, we have some we? in the basement. They're Allens, yeah. I've got an old three wood, and I love hitting with that thing. I don't know. It's just, it's a mental thing. It's like, of course, I can hit with this, but not my metal, you know, 2000s era clubs. Yeah. So, <laughs> but uh, it, it sounds so cool when you smack that ball, you know. Yeah, <laughs> at least I have something to blame it on when I hit it with a wood. It's like, oh, this club's oh, crap. This is like 70 years <laughs> old. Would have had like, the exact same result. Yeah. You know, three fairways to the right. Oh, yeah. No, if you go golfing with Sorry. me, the safest place to stand is right in front of me when I'm oh, driving. Yeah. Well, that's uh, why a lot of kids in no high chance. school uh, practice, uh, you know, do do batting practice with wooden bats because it's, it's so much Less harder. Pop. Yeah. What, I mean, it just depends. Would that not mess up your timing of the swing, though, when you're facing? Well, the weight's not, the same, if right? If the weight's the same. Yeah, oh, you can okay. get the same weight. So it's it's really about training yourself to find that quarter size sweet spot when, uh, you know, the metal bats have, like, a baseball size sweet spot. Or mm-hmm. bigger. You know, right. They, those bats got kind of ridiculous. They, That's a good point. They actually toned, they had to tone down the performance of the bats the year after I graduated. And they all because of you, yeah. producer Dave. And yeah, I just hit <laughs> it was all like, guys, this is getting out. GHSA. But you know, so they did it for high school and college, and all of college's stats went down by like fifty percent. Wow. Home yeah. runs, you know, doubles, uh, all that. It just cut it in half. I feel like they should just be having college players use wooden bats. Yeah, I wish they. Would I mean, they are a step away, you know, from being, you know, even in the minors. And the reason they don't use those bats in the majors because somebody would die like and i feel like what's i mean there is there really that big of a disparity where you can justify something that makes that big of an impact like why i don't know i would David, say maybe, so i'd say the average pro is quite a bit better than the average college player it's not about being i don't think it's go better pro. but like when you make contact with a baseball bat that's 
aluminum or whatever they're made of now, like that thing flies. Like what David was talking about at the pop of a bat. The they had, yeah, they had to actually <laughs> regulate it. Like the ones we used in college could only uh, traject the ball off at 98 miles an hour. And it wouldn't do it any faster than that, or something crazy like that. That's what that that's what that BSR certification on those bats was about. Was okay, about so the, they made that adjustment. Then. Yeah, well, that that's when I was there, and then they realized that for college, that rating was crazy because yeah. college players are so big that right. I guess they're measuring like the average high school person but then the college guys are roping it back at like 115 you know and killing third baseman left and right yeah. <laughs> all those lost a lot of good men out there yeah, yeah. playing R. for the yankees all right yeah, the, the trees. trees and free agency i guess i don't want to talk about <laughs> all right so the last thing that we wanted to touch on here and we can go through this kind of quick because we've already hit on it uh but this is is the nba becoming unwatchable my Stance on this is absolutely 100% yes. I think they should get rid of the three-point line. There should be no, no. three-point line. <laughs> you have to work the ball to the interior. Bring back the tough throw and bows post play. That's what I want to see in an NBA game. Somebody Tell me I'm Hoosiers. wrong. They have Tell that sport, Will. It's I'm on wrong. ice skates. And it's on ice, and it's called hockey. <laughs> Tell me I'm wrong. I thought you were going to say it's the WNBA. Uh, I mean, yeah. I've never watched regular season NBA. Yeah, so same. I really exactly. That. I don't think we're all going to be there. Until the playoffs. It's I'm unwatchable. <clears throat> yeah. I just don't think, like, and for the longest time, I've been like, there's no defense in the NBA. And I think for the large part, like, it gets a wrap because of the ridiculous scores that are being put up there. But when you watch Steph Curry, like, randomly jumping around and throwing up threes, like, people throw up you know, shots and beer pong, like well, they don't even talent, care, man. and that goes in. It's like, you can't defend that. At yeah. what point are you just like, I don't know. Well, no, whatever. I think, I, so I've, I've kind of, I've done some research on this, uh, <clears throat> Facebook comments on post on uh, ESPN, <laughs> uh, and I saw a lot of people kind of complain as well, and I said the same thing, there's no defense in the NBA, like what's the point, the season's so long, uh, you know, it seems to be just LeBron and the Warriors, and I just think well, from what I've read and what I observed, and I guess, and some other points I took away were the way the uh, rules have been changed. Same as in NFL, it's it's been more it's more catered now towards offense, to scoring points, to be yeah. more exciting. I think they've maybe overdone it. They've yeah, like overshot anti, it to anti where, traveling to where yeah yeah. I mean, that's a good point. And then I there think such things traveling. And it's, I mean, yeah. it, basketball is, it seems so subjective, and it's in the foul calling as well. It's like that that was a foul, but that's not it depends on when it yeah, happens. Yeah, I think the the stature of the player also plays into it. It does. Effect. It totally does. And then the superstar them and, like, and all that. It goes into effect, so it makes it it waters it down. I think it's fun to see a high scoring game, but so frequently, and when the final score is one hundred and fifty eight to one hundred and twenty two, like that's just that's, that's totally the other thing that makes it's not it, hard to score points. Obviously, so. Yeah. What's the point in scoring the most? Well, I'll tell you the other thing that oh, player almost player wise makes player it wise. unwatchable to me is after every drive uh, a player takes, you know, into the paint for a layup or you know whatever. Every single time that they're coming back down the court, it's like they've got their hands up and they're looking around for a foul. foul. Yeah. I can't stand that. I I wish somebody would put together a montage of how many times LeBron James has done that in a season. It'd probably be like like after driving and scoring, yeah. looking for and one. Yeah, you're talking about or or just missing the layup and looking for a foul. I mean, it'd probably be a 25 minute long AKA video of 10 Eric. second clips. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's Eric unbelievable. Rumney perfected by Eric in church league basketball. Well, that's a problem. That's sick, right? Eric's watching his heroes here on basketball <laughs> and trying to you know, replicate yeah. their. Well, yeah. Ron, we know you're watching. Ridiculous. Think of the children. We have yeah. to hold you accountable. LeBron. You need to be a better role starts. model than that. It starts at the top. Thanks for listening. Also, we by the way, we yes. appreciate your yeah. athleticism, and we are trying to enjoy it while we have <laughs> Even it. Even though we decided Brady is better than you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Suck it, football. But I don't think I don't think we really need to touch any more on that. We've I think we can all agree the NBA is unwatchable. They should do away with the three point line, and no one should be. Complaining <laughs> we don't about all agree on that, but it we, is no, it's a hundred percent. All right, I want to give a shout <laughs> I think out. Think we all our, agree that. I think when I say all, I mean. Me. Uh, we're gonna this go. This is ahead. Will's podcast, and he gets to decide what the group <laughs> thinks. Yes. All right. We're gonna go ahead and give a shout out to our friend Ed Freeman at State Farm. Talked about Ed a lot on this show, as well we should. Ed Freeman is the best agent in the state. So if you are looking for coverage uh, when you've got a boat, a house, a life, or a car, be sure to look up Ed Freeman if you're in Georgia uh, for all of your insurance coverage needs. Um, so we're going to transition a little bit and talk about the NFL in particular this past weekend. Unfortunately, Ooh. I did not really have a chance to watch these games. I was oh, actually out of a weekend. It was, I was, football. yeah, I was out of town, uh, down in Gainesville with the girlfriend and her family. And we were, we were driving back kind of late start. So it literally just took up like the entire time 
that the games were on. So I will divert to you guys on what you were really able to see. Um, probably one of the most exciting weekends uh, mm-hmm. f- of football this season. Yeah, yeah. Two <laughs> conference championships, two overtimes. Yeah, I mean, you don't get better than that. It's the TV Drake um, curse. TV loves yeah, it. Yeah, some, Drake, some, Drake funny. for those of you that don't know, Drake wore, well, backtrack a little bit. Drake is a huge bandwagon fan. And if you don't know who Drake is, He's a rapper and entertainer, but he is known for being a bandwagon fan and then those teams falling short. Once um, he jumps on the bandwagon. Once he jumps on the bandwagon. Who else he band? He's a Lake or uh, Bama? K- Kentucky fan, uh, right? Raptors. He's a Bama fan? Yeah. yeah he, what? Wore, he wore a Bama hoodie. He put on the Raptors jersey. He's, well, he's, a, he's, he's, he's from, he's from, from Toronto. Toronto, but poor Raptors. They'll just never, they never have a chance. They did. He did Bama. I think he wore Duke. He went Kentucky one time. He's going back and forth. He went and shot on the floor at Kentucky. I know, I know he's a Kentucky fan. Um, well, he's, an every, he's an everybody fan. Yeah. It's, I'm it's trying to think of some others where disgusting. he's been courtside with, like, gear on. With, so with was the team he swag Saints on. or Chiefs? So he wore a sweater that had all four of the team's logos on it. Oh, what was he hoping that the stadium uh, would just catch on fire? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. A and black it's hole. Just, just... It's just funny that he wore all four logos. and Classic it's like, Drake. He's hedging his bets. Yeah, they were all almost. They, they, they all, all lost. They yeah. all, yeah. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> They all day. needed overtime. Drake, yeah. stop. So there you go. Vegas and degenerate gambler Eric could probably tell you if Drake. He's a safe yeah. Pay bet. attention to Drake's fashion Drake, choices Drake's before teams, you make Drake's picks. teams do not win, but yeah. they cover. Lock of the you week. You can hedge your bets on bank. who Drake is picking and go the other way. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah. But, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Let's but it was good. Well, the it. early game um, Saints was Rams. the Saints game. So the story of that game was the – Pretty apparent pass interference, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. Um, oh, no, there's late in regulation that would have sealed the game if it would have been a first down for the Saints. They would have been able yeah. to bleed the clock, I, I believe, down to zeros. If nothing else, kicked a field goal with like four seconds left mm-hmm. to go up by six. Um, you could tell that, to me, that it should have been called because the cornerback got up and was not celebrating a big pass breakup on yeah. fourth down or whatever it was. Or yeah. it was I guess it was third down because they still kicked a field goal. Right. Or, I don't even recall. I'm trying to remember the exact situation, but when an NFL cornerback breaks up a pass on a big important play and does not get up losing his mind and celebrating like a fool, um, you know that he knows he did something wrong. <laughs> Maybe. So yeah. To me, when he yeah. got up looking around like, oh, whoops. Yeah. I think they, they did his body the language. Flag, and then he started celebrating. Yeah. It was pretty. If you watch it in slow motion, it's, it's just bad. gross. I mean, it's not even enough. Matter of opinion, it's just that, that was that's as the most black blatant. and white yeah. as it gets. I mean, there, I mean, it could have it could have been a personal foul the way he hit it was him. targeting like, everything. Yeah, not, yeah. not only was it pass interference for hitting him too early, he led with his helmet, yeah. was not playing the ball. The ball was still yeah. in the air. The ball Did was catchable. I mean, <laughs> there's a whole bunch. No, of, seriously, you honestly can't even call that football. Maybe back in the day when our grandparents played, and they like that's just 15 let, miles. Let the boys play. Yeah, but I mean, that wasn't even football. That was some. I mean, granted, he was preventing the big play from happening. I understand, but he just did not even care. He was just. <laughs> my my one job is to knock the crap out of this guy <laughs> and just prevent the play. I mean, he he wasn't even trying to play defense. He was just like, to hell with this. I'm, I'm not letting it happen. I got burned. Uh, I think it's fun because as I'm not a Falcons fan, but being down here, I really didn't. I'm sick of the Saints myself. I didn't really want to see the Saints come into Atlanta and play. It wouldn't have changed my life one bit, but it's just kind of fun. They don't get rewarded that. Uh, at the same token, <laughs> I would be absolutely sick if my team – it can happen to anyone's team if my season ended like that. If Georgia yeah. was left out of the playoffs or the championship game, championship game for that instance, same, same – apples to apples, I would – I mean – I'd have a personal be, vendetta uh, yeah, against I, that I, corner I, and every referee I, I that would ever walked so, in the stadium. I'd be trying to think how sick I would be on a sport of football if that is if that was what kept my team out of yeah. the game. So I cannot imagine how just – I mean, it's easy for us to make fun and mock and ha-ha and enjoy kind of the – the sadness that is Saints fans right now, but I just I couldn't I, I would be inconsolable I think I, if that I, was how Georgia's yeah. there there was a thing I saw online where somebody was like Sean Payton and the after game presser should just berate those refs to the point where he gets fined and the owner of the team should pay that fine yeah because that was so he I should mean, get up there and yeah. be like the first thing I want to say is that these refs should never ref an NFL game again they have one job and they screwed it up they get paid you know yeah like quarter million dollars a year yeah. like. I think yeah. that would have been hilarious. Did you hear about the Saints fans that sued? <clears throat> yeah. yeah. I know, I know, there, there's a bunch of billboards all around Atlanta. They were embarrassing themselves with that lawsuit with what they're claiming. Have you seen that? Are they claiming like I, collusion? Loss of enjoyment of life. Yeah. Loss of fun. Lo- wasted you can time. do that? They're you trying. You can sue somebody for that? <laughs> they're trying. I don't know. I mean, hell. I mean, <laughs> Who are they suing? The Browns fans. Sorry, Spencer. The Browns fans could sue for life. I mean, <laughs> I've been yeah. working for like six Seriously. years. I think that's grounds. For <laughs> yeah, <because> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to sue my boss. Loss of life. Loss of enjoyment of life. Who are they even suing? The league? The NFL. They're trying. 
trying to. Well, it's wild. I know. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know. It, it is gross. It is gross to go back and watch that play and see how it happened. And that that does that is unfortunate. I am glad. That being said, it is fun to see Sean McVay, a young coach, just a couple of months older than us guys here in the room, leading an NFL franchise and a <laughs> what room you full of men lately? to win a Super Bowl, <laughs> and then see Tud uh, mm-hmm. getting to play for a ring as a Georgia alum, which is awesome. But that's just. As far as football goes, I think as just fans of the game, everyone should be pretty disgusted and upset with just how, you know, Let me ask that's you. how you win and that's how you lose. That's <laughs> Let me ask you this. Does it make it worse when the NFL comes back and acknowledges that they blew two calls? Do you think, I mean, <laughs> like to me, it's almost like another uh, salt in the wound type thing. I think it's worse right now. because yeah, then who do you direct the anger yeah. at? Well, they, Roger Goodell hasn't even come out and said anything. I think that's the biggest thing. Well, Maybe I'm he sure doesn't that's a have PR to. Move. And probably, but you have to own that. Because there are only, well, it's not like this a whole field of games being played. There are two games, the two biggest of three, two of the three biggest games at the end of the season mm-hmm. were being played. You have nothing else to address or do, really. Yeah, I mean, I think that though, you, when you look at, if, if Roger is going, if they're going to take Roger, Roger, can we call you Roger? Can we call you Roger? If Roger <laughs> is going to take disciplinary action against the referees that were involved in that game, that's when I think he needs to come out and make a statement. But it's, it's, I don't know if they've come forward with any kind of information like that. But that's where you, that's where mm-hmm. you plant your flag and you say, okay, this was an egregious call that we missed. Yeah. But these are the steps that we're taking to do that. I think it's almost more of an indictment on him. Because it doesn't sound like they're doing anything. It doesn't. So, I mean, and you got to be careful too. And obviously, they'll look at it. I'm sure they'll look at. I'm sure they'll look at things of saying, you know, can we review pass interference calls? I mean, I have, yeah. I have some interesting news. On under this two one. minutes, under five minutes, whatever it's going to be. He also has to be careful with cracking his whip too hard on like yep. missed calls because then you're going to really. Hey, you open up a whole other like happy. Well, then see, you're gonna I think what the issue. story. Well, or Dave, sorry, yeah, yeah, David, an announcement. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, an announcement. Uh, Public service announcement. I was uh, watching the news and they had a guy who was I don't vice president of NFL refs at one point, and they were asking That's a cool job. Yeah, something like that. I could do that job. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they, they, they were uh, they were asking him like what he would do. Uh, about this right and he goes well it's a slippery slope right you can't you can't start reviewing judgment calls all of a sudden every game is going to have and i think we all get that his idea which i thought was kind of compelling he said i think he said college college there's eight college refs on the field but there's only seven nfl i think that's what he said not the most important part of this but uh he was saying that um what he would consider would be to basically put like a sky ref in the box with all access to all of the stuff who could, who could turn over a call. Like you've only got 20 seconds or so to review something that blatant, but when it's that easy to overturn it, you could, he said it would only take 15, 20 seconds to re- relay that, you know, before it becomes a whole blown up, screwed up Super Bowl type situation. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, which is like a halfway in between. It's yeah. not like review. It's just like if that eighth ref, catches it before it like turns into a thing. I mean, they could easily in 20 seconds say we're going to waive this and yeah. then everyone would move on. And if there's any call to review that makes well, could, as much of an impact on a game, I think in my opinion would be pass interference. So what what would be the negative yeah. if they just allowed coaches to challenge penalty calls or no calls the way they can challenge a catch or a touchdown or inbounds or anything? What if we did that? Uh, yeah. Cause if that approach. had gotten reviewed, if, if, uh, well, what Payton, if Sean Payton had been allowed to throw a red flag on that play and been like, hey, that was supposed to be pass interference. Because that's not on the coaches is my argument. Because I, I was thinking, well, what if you're out of challenges? And now this is out of your control, just like, well, you know, I mean, a time, sometimes I mean, stuff's out of your yeah, control. But, yeah, it is. And it's an imperfect game run by imperfect coaches and perfect players and perfect, you know, refs. I understand except, that. Except Kirby. <laughs> except Kirby's Kirby. perfect. Yeah, except the fake punt. <laughs> we're going through all those and the fake field goal in LSU. And yeah. The Ole Miss game. And okay. Auburn last year. But <clears throat> anyway, um, <laughs> But yeah, I mean, it's just uh, I, I hate I, I think that's that's a fun way to explore that. I think I guess I would be livid if I was out of challenges, mm-hmm. which is rare, and then that happens, and it should still be correct. Like yeah, I agree. With you, Tyler. Now, this, this is a black and white, but that's yeah. out of your control. And now the ref, yeah. now it feels like the ref, it, the ref knows you're out of challenges. Right. So now it's. I could, you know, no, that might be. I, I don't but see a true. ref being that selfish, but now he's like, well, now no one can call me on it. Well, yeah, I'm not going to get fined. And even more than that, it's it's not their job to do yours. Yeah. Like, a ref is out there to call a game and make sure the rules are adhered to. But a coach's challenge does challenge the ref's call. Uh, I mean, because, like, the spot, the spot of the ball, you're cha- yeah. he so calls I guess the catch, the, I guess I'm the, challenging his call. The argument against the thing I just posed is the challenge right now is to 
challenge whether or not something happened a certain way versus whether or not a rule was broken. Like, were they yeah. inbound? Did they break the plane? Yeah. It's not a judgment call. It's of, is can we slow it down and get a better angle? Yeah. They had versus a, they had an interesting HBO special about baseball and automatic strike and ball uh, calling. Yeah. And it was really interesting. They went was through it pro or against like getting rid of the umpire altogether and just having a strike zone. I think that's a terrible it's, idea. Yeah, I don't it, want that it wasn't. It, it was just about the situation. So they weren't saying we should do this, but HBO always they they did do sitting all sitting in the middle, never picking a side. <laughs> they did do all these stats that talked about how many you know balls and strikes were actually missed. Um, and they did a, wait, I'll skip. It's not that many. I'll, it's a lot. Is it really? Yeah, it's a ton. <laughs> and, and I, and I'll skip, I'll skip the rest of that explanation to say that they did an experiment with, um, a minor league game where they had a computer calling balls and strikes and they just relayed it to the umpire's ear. So he didn't call a single thing, the whole game, except for, I guess, safe at the plate or whatever. And so the whole game, he's just like, strike ball strike. And no one noticed. Like no one, like everyone walked away from the game. And they were like, "Wow, that was a really good game. Good, good calls." But see, I think there's <laughs> way more. Mm. Did any batters turn around and be like, "Oh, that was a ball," like, or get no, mad or it anything? It was computer. It was spot on. I mean, I think there's well, way more, yeah. way more variance in what it means for a strike zone in baseball. Well, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm pro the umpire. Pitches, there's crowding yeah, yeah. the plate. There's, I mean, there's a million and one things. Yeah, like, there's so many. I'm, I'm pro the umpire because you can, you can work that as a pitcher to your. Yeah, and that's a skill yeah. set as a catcher too. Yeah, I yeah, love that. Pa- painting, painting the strike zone is the, one of the funner things. But the whole documentary is really interesting though because they break down like this whole three inch window around the strike zone and how. Uh, how many calls actually, you know, make it within that window. And they even did an experiment about how like the home teams get 8% more favorable calls. Just well, who's an umpire or who's a, who's a manager going to come out and argue with then that's, that's, that's so much yeah. fun to watch. Bobby Cox wouldn't yeah, be who Bobby he was Cox, today. His legacy. Watson yeah. was coming out and fighting Watson. The Watson, computer. you're wrong. Yeah, a robot. <laughs> yeah. but, but so with, with this game, I, I basically, I think what happened is the refs have it drilled so far into their head of, because in a perfect game, the refs are like essentially invisible. They call the blatant calls, but they stay out of the way and they let the players play. So they have it mm-hmm. drilled so far into their head. Do not affect the outcome of the game by throwing a flag on a judgment call. And they took that yeah. to the extreme yeah. to yeah. where they affected the outcome of the no game action. by not throwing yeah. a flag on a judging call. When would they you guys, have. would you guys be willing to have every NFL or college game go an extra, I don't know, 20, 25 minutes. If it meant reviewing these major calls, <sighs> they're already so long. I don't know. I, mean, I love football, yeah. but the game is but already I mean, what, so long. Would it be just a, f- I mean, every scoring play is already reviewed. Yeah. I so, think, I think true. within two minutes, within five minutes. Okay. Yeah. Something to that effect. Yeah. Or maybe maybe throws over so many yards. I mean, oh, obviously gonna get, the, yeah. the, the SEC on oh, CBS true. games are already so going to get a lot of bombs. Yeah. But I don't know. I mean, it's something interesting. The CBS games are already so long. Like, yeah. We could I review them to during the thousands a time of thing, Buffalo right? Wild Wings commercials. I say during a time. It has to be a time. Yeah. It has to be two minutes again. Or Plus, something. they could just review it during all the commercials. They'd be like, while y'all were gone, we figured out. We decided that that was an extremely blatant pass interference. It was kind of like the Georgia game when we came back and we thought we landed the punt on the three. And now all of a sudden they're snapping the ball. Let's don't do that. I think there's some other things, there are Dave. some other things that factor into that too. Like it breaks up the pace of play, and so if a team yeah. is sucking wind and they yeah. need a break, and now he goes to a review and they yeah. have time no, to walk yeah. over the side. So I think there's so many other things that are rely on that. You want to have the best possible outcome as close as you can. I just yeah. don't know what those parameters. Would I mean, be. again, this is a, this is an egregious. This isn't that common, right? So we have to we have to kind of reel it back in. Whereas it's a big game and it, and it hurts it, it and seeing how it happened on the stage, it happened. It's not all that common. I don't think any of us feel we get cheated out of games like that all that often because of a bad late call. So I think yeah. it's to limit the scope of what we're talking about, you know, compared to, to, to how often it happens. It's just, I, I saw a tweet today. Um, just cause I don't know. We might even have to talk oh, yeah. about Patriots chiefs next week. Cause yeah. we're probably low on time and we've got a week till the Super Bowl. but I thought <laughs> it was funny cause somebody tweeted, um, Sean McVay took the Rams from not making the playoffs in 12 years to the Super Bowl in two years. And they said he's worth his weight in gold. And then somebody tweeted back and said, um, the value of gold is this, and he weighs this much. And so a, st- a gold statue of Sean McVay would be worth $3.3 million. So I would say he's worth quite a bit more than his weight in gold. Wow. <laughs> I thought How that was that? pretty neat. That is pretty cool. Yeah. I wonder what I'm worth in gold. Ooh, awesome. Not that. Probably about as much as Sean McVay. You guys are probably about the same size. Yeah. <laughs> All right. 
three point. You can find me here, Rams. Which yeah. I'm like, if it doesn't work out in the <laughs> Super Bowl, hell, next I'll week. do it for cheaper. <laughs> or two yeah. weeks from now. Do awesome. we have enough time to wrap up the last next game or no? Well, let's save it for next I, week. Yeah, I, I think, think there's some good it. stuff to talk about. It was okay. it was also a very good game. Yeah. In yeah. short, I know that PI game, that PI call that we're talking about this whole time, uh, kind of dominated the discussion of that game, and I think it should. At the end of the day, it went to overtime. Uh, and Breeze got Drew the ball Breeze first. Got the ball That's first. a good narrative. Pressured. But... Threw an interception. Rams got the ball in favorable field position. Didn't do much with it. They got in enough of a score field position to get in field goal range. And I don't know the guy's Zerline, name, but oh my, my god, kicker this year. Did you see that kick, David? That, that kick. Seven yards. Think, that would have been, been good from, from seventy. 80. And that guy was a maybe. moonshot. I think yeah, he it was, crushed that. Uh, kick. That was ridiculous. And yeah. he that ball, like he was fist pumping as soon as he made yeah. contact. Oh my god, he that knew was, it was good. It was cool moon to watch. Shot, dude. That was awesome. When he that hit that, man. it was like that like Tyler said. Cool. I'm not a Falcons fan necessarily, so I'm not as I don't really care about the Saints being here, not being here. But yeah. if you're a, a Falcons fan and a Georgia fan, that was a perfect game because the Saints lost, Huge, and now yeah. Todd is coming home. Todd yeah. versus we Sony Michelle. Todd Gurley in the two Super Bowl. DGDs. Yeah, two listeners. Actually, two that's big, pretty exciting. Yeah, thank you yeah. guys for listening. Keep Proud of you guys. Up. And Nick Chubb has a chance to win NFL Rookie Offensive Rookie of the Year. So guaranteed a dog, a dog great in running back. That a, picture a of the three of them, uh, Sony and Nick's freshman year and yeah. Todd's oh, junior yeah. year, where they all have their backs to the camera and their three names. They're wearing their. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I think that's. I a wish that would more. inspire our running backs. <laughs> Like you know, you would, what are you talking about? Like you would I mean, seeing all these Georgia running backs coming through. Like oh no, it definitely. I think it, I think it'll help with recruiting, recruiting more than anything. Yeah, well that that's what I mean. Oh, okay. okay, yeah, yeah, yeah that'll happen. Awesome. One's one's getting a ring. So <laughs> good yeah. dogs. We got Zamir White on us on the mend from those two ACLs. <laughs> we're so back, baby. Look out for yeah, Georgia is so next year's the year. Next year's our year. The dogs me. are back, and we'll be back here next week. So be sure to tune in <laughs> uh, from all of us here. Will, Jimmy, Tyler, and Dave, producer Dave. I want to say thank you for tuning in. Spotify, iTunes, and YouTube, you can find us there. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Uh, but once again, thank you for listening, and go dogs. Go dogs. <laughs>